is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here this will be a spoiler -free review for salem's lot so this is directed and written by gary doberman uh it is starring lewis pullman mckenzie lay bill camp william sattler and several others now writer ben mears is returning to his childhood home of jerusalem's lot in search of inspiration only to discover his hometown is being preyed upon by a vampire leading him to band together with a ragtag group to fight it now, I will say that Salem's Lot, this latest adaptation anyway, is a decent Stephen King adaptation. It's not the best thing. It's not the worst thing. But it is a decent enough Stephen King adaptation that many people who have read the novel might find to be faithful. And even if you haven't read the novel, you just might have a good time with it. But I've seen better Stephen King adaptations, I will say that. And I am going to now go back and rewatch that three-hour miniseries because I just want to see... If I find that miniseries to be scarier than this film. But Ben Mears returns to his hometown for inspiration in his next book. He hasn't been there since he was nine and lost his parents in a DUI accident. He finds a place to rent while he's in town. He becomes curious about who bought this Marston house, a supposed haunted house where a husband killed his wife back in the 30s and had been vacant until a mysterious European man named Straker bought it. Of course, something creepier than the man who bought it rests in the Marston house. The vampire Barlow and the entire town is put on notice after a young boy goes missing. Now, Doberman's screenplay doesn't rush into the vampire madness. There's a significant amount of time spent letting us get a feel of the town, which helps elevate interest in all of the characters that are involved. You have Burke, a respected teacher in town, Susie, a love interest for ben who's working to get her real estate license our younger cast of 11 year olds including danny a new kid in town named mark who is incredibly bold and wins you over the moment he appears and then we have ralph and several others with so many characters salem's lot isn't going to explore them all in this short amount of time but the time spent introducing these likable towns members is enough to win me over as a viewer hoping they make it out and adds emotional investment to some of the attacks featured later on most of the dialogue exchanges are believable as well, which is always good. One drawback to this story in this screenplay is Ben Mears. He isn't very interesting as a protagonist. Sure, I don't mind him, but his pairing with certain characters later on enhances my investment because without these team-ups that occur, Ben wasn't doing much for me. Now, I don't know if the novel is like this, but or because I've only seen the previous Mina series, but this latest adaptation doesn't spend enough time selling me on why everyone just jumps on the It's Vampires bandwagon quickly. Ben, I understand, but everyone barely showed any significant signs of doubt, and I just didn't buy that. The way they all were just like It's Vampires didn't sit right with me. As for Barlow, as an antagonist goes, Doberman at first keeps the monster shrouded in mystery, effectively building curiosity for me as a viewer, and the story is selling me on him as this master over these being turned in town the smaller vampires but then the also often neglected less is more approach is abandoned and barlow's intimidating presence withers away with each new sequence it appears in the other vamps offer some exciting scares when the mayhem really kicks in but barlow's overexposure does put a damper on this vampire outbreak outside of the vamp salem's lot makes great use of character surroundings our curiosity as viewers and an occasional jump scare jump scare to keep the story terrifying one of the best examples i can think of happens during the first act when a pair of siblings are walking home and can confront it by this mysterious striker and then it's a shot of them alongside trees going through the night as it starts to turn to night and then yes something happens to one of the kids that scene alone was very scary just because of how it was lit and because of the fact that something unexpected came into frame and then, of course, the inevitable happened. Gary Doberman's direction made Salem's Lot quite atmospheric, specifically during the night scenes. It definitely seemed like a relative to films like Annabelle Comes Home, Devil Made Me Do It, The Conjuring, and other Conjuring Universe films thanks to the cinematographer. The warm colors on screen during the day make the town seem so alive and full of energy, very welcoming. The colder colors for the night effectively give off the suspenseful vibes Doverman is going for and heightens Barlow's arrival in town as well as the, as well as the um, suspenseful scenes that unfold during that time as well. The spotlighting during certain scenes always kept me anxious and in anticipation of the inevitable scare that was coming. Lewis Pullman does a solid job, even if Bill was a bit iffy as a lead. His chemistry with Mackenzie Lay sold their dynamic as a couple. Before I go any further, I do want to circle back and just talk about the cinematography a little bit more. The dynamic shots during the night sequences 
really help keep you help you feel isolated in the character's shoes. One scene in particular I'm thinking of is when a kid goes out to investigate a noise he's hearing outside of his window and the camera starts circling him and makes us feel like there's something around him. We know it. He can't see it. We are, we're not seeing it yet. So it's keeping you in anticipation of what is to come. There's a lot of fog. All of that, all of those shots throughout the film really helped set the mood and atmosphere constantly during those night scenes, which I loved. So when it comes to Alexander Ward, who I believe starred as Barlow, his acting saved the character of Barlow here for me because the look was doing a disservice to their efforts to sell a scary vampire. His mannerisms kept me unnerved, even if Barlow's look was underwhelming. As far as the pacing goes, the pacing, I would say, is very good in, in the sense that when you have a tense sequence that's being presented, we're not rushing through it. It's allowing it to marinate, get under your skin, and then it moves on. Whereas opposed to some other films where you might see a tense sequence or an opportunity to build a tense sequence and you kind of kind of just breeze through it they they really hold on to some of these shots let it linger in your mind as a viewer and then they just build upon them on numerous different different occasions the best one again i can think of is when this child goes out into the night because he thinks he hears a friend outside of the window and then something starts happening to him too although i will say the third act does feel rushed the minute the town is overran by vampires and you spend some moments dealing with that realization it's resolved just as quick as the realization sets in and it's like okay i guess i guess we're done here and then the movie's over that was a bit of a weird decision to make but all in all i thought the pacing was fine otherwise so i would say i would give salem's lot a solid 6.5 out of 10 again it's not the best thing it's not the worst thing it's just a decent enough adaptation of the of the novel i would say now again i'm saying this as someone who hasn't even read read the novel so maybe some of you who have read the novel more than me are gonna say it's not a faithful adaptation i'm just more so speaking in terms of how the film is as a film it's not a poorly made film overall it is quite good let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on the social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.